this video is all about cell injury in pathology in this video i have elaborated the mechanism of action of injury along with its cellular adaptations so let's begin with the video we all know that normal cells are in the stage of homeostasis but under stressful and injurious conditions the cells loses the status of homeostasis homeostasis refers means the cell is able to perform its function within physiological limits and in injurious and stressful conditions the cell loses its homeostasis normal cells in the presence of stress or any kind of injurious stimuli like the radiation mutation or any pathogenic reactions the cell is converted into abnormal morphology and certain adaptation reaction taking place if the cell is not able to adapt then it will undergo injury so certain adaptations are hypertrophy hyperplasia metaplasia dysplasia and atrophy if the cell is not able to adapt then it will undergo injury so the injury is classified into the reversible injury and irreversible injury again the irreversible injury is classified into necrosis and apoptosis so what is stress to the cell or injury stimuli uh, any infection agent it can be anything like a bacterial infection viral or it can be fungal now the immunological reaction is also a kind of stress to cell it can damage to cell or hemolysis reaction takes place mutations it can be acquired or congenital burns cold radiation hypoxia chemical agents and drugs and certain hormone imbalances also predispose to hypertrophy and hyperplasia cellular adaptations taking place by injurious stimuli are hypertrophy hyperplasia metaplasia dysplasia atrophy adaptations can be physiological or pathological if the stress is excessive or persistent the cellular adaptations can turn into cell injuries so let's start with the hypertrophy hypertrophy means increase in the size of cell not the number of cells right so due to increase in the synthesis of structural proteins by the growth factors like tumor growth factor beta insulin like growth factor fibroblast growth factor endothelin and angiosin 2 so example of hypertrophy are bulging of muscles in bodybuilders it is a kind of example of physiological hypertrophy another example of physiological hypertrophy is enlargement of uterus in pregnancy and bulging of muscles after the heavy workout and the another example of that is a pathological ventricular hypertrophy hyperplasia hyperplasia means increase in the number of cells it is due to the stimulation of stem cells or differentiation of cells within the physiological limits so example of hyperplasia are regeneration of liver lobe after the partial hypectomy is an example of physiological hyperplasia in the partial hypectomy the liver lobe is regenerated after the 6 month or after the period of one year one year the example of a pathological hyperplasia is endometrial hyperplasia and the most common is benign prostatic hyperplasia hyperplasia is also known as a fertile soil because certain kind of cancerous proliferations are taking place from hyperplasia so it is also known as a fertile soil for cancer proliferations it means reduction of size of organ or whole tissue it is due to decrease in size or either decrease in the number of cells so example of atrophy are the regression of notochord and thyroglossal duct during the embryonic life it is an example of physiological atrophy and some pathological atrophy are cachexia senile atrophy of brain and denervation atrophy after the surgery in which there is a nerve damage take place and after prolonged immobilization after the fracture casting it is also one kind of in pathological atrophy is it is also known as a disuse atrophy metaplasia it is an irreversible change in which one adult type of epithelium is changed into another type of adult epithelium so here is reprogramming of stem cell is taking place for example barrett's esophagus barrett esophagus in barrett esophagus the initial squamous epithelium is replaced by the columnar type of epithelium in lower one third of esophagus this image is of an endoscopic image of an esophagus of lower one third part this red discoloration 
this velvety red discoloration is a barrett type of esophagus and in between the red type of discoloration you can see the pale type of is normal epithelium squamous and the reddish discoloration velvety is columnar epithelium so here is an endoscopic image of an Barrett's esophagus. Another type of metaplasia is myositis ossificans, in which the bone formation is taking place after any traumatic injury of muscle. If the cellular erupation is not taking place or injury is persistent, then it leads to cell injury. The cell injury is divided into reversible type of injury and irreversible injury. The features of reversible injury are cellular swelling, decrease in the formation of ATP, and alteration of sodium and potassium pump due to the so alteration of sodium and potassium pump there is an uh, hydropic change blabbing and loss of microvilli dilation of endoplasmic reticulum and chromatic clumping after this the first changes are cellular swelling it is also known as a hydropic change areosol injury areosol injury are classified into necrosis and apoptosis now necrosis necrosis means and zemetic digestion of injured cells. So the denaturation of intercellular protein is taking place and also the rupture of a cellular membrane is taking place. So the contents of cells are leaked into the plasma. Along with the denaturation there is a local inflammatory reaction is taking place. The microscopic feature of a necrosis is increase in eosinophilia that is we can see the increase in pink color in HNE stain. Malignificus are actually the phospholipid mass. The cell membranes are condensed and are forming the phalinfigus. Necrosis is always and always in pathological condition. No physiological necrosis is taking place and there is a no term like a physiological necrosis. Necrosis are classified into various types on the basis of patterns. So the types of necrosis are coagulative necrosis, liquefactive necrosis, caseous necrosis, fat necrosis, fibrinoid necrosis and gangrenous necrosis. So let's start with coagulated necrosis. Coagulated necrosis is most common type of necrosis among all. It is seen in ischemia and in fact of most tissues except brain because brain is showing the liquefactive type of necrosis. It is due to infection or ischemic injury which denatures enzymes. So secondarily the proteolysis of dead cell is blocked and the cell is removed by the phagocytosis. You can say the figure there is a pale discoloration showing the coagulatory necrosis. In the histological section of coagulatory necrosis, the cellular architecture is preserved and cell outlines are markedly seen. So the cell outlines are resemble like tombstone like tombstone like appearance. Nuclei are disappears and increase in the eosinophilia that is increase in the pink color density in HNE stain liquefactive necrosis. It is due to the digestion of cells and conversion of tissue into liquid viscous mass. The color density is yellowish fluid due to the pus and dead leukocyte debris. It is seen in the bacterial, bacterial abscess of brain and certain brain infarcts. Accumulation of neutrophil releases the lysosomal enzyme that is in proteolytic enzymes that digest the tissue and finally convert it into converted the tissue into the dead and liquid mass. In histological section of liquid necrosis, the dense accumulation of macrophages that is mostly neutrophil are seen along with cellular debris and in late phase the cavitation and spaces, empty spaces are seen in histological sections. Now fat necrosis. Fat necrosis means the local area of fat destructions and its basic mechanism action is saponification reaction. Saponification reaction taking place in fat rich areas it is called a fat necrosis. Seen in acute pancreatitis and the trauma over the fat rich areas like the breast, buttocks or abdomen. The damaged pancreatic cells release pancreatic lipase. This lipase will rupture the adipocytes present in body and release glycerol and free fatty acids. This free fatty acid will combine with endogenous calcium and form calcium soaps which resemble a hard yellowish stony like appearance gross in gross sections. The figure is showing the accumulation of fat and calcium in the acute pancreatitis. So this is a pancreas and if the pancreas is damaged the pancreas will release 
pancreatic lipase and this lipase act on adipocyte present in body and the adipocyte release glycerol and free fatty acid from the adipose tissue and the saponification reaction is taking place that is the free fatty acid released from the adipose tissue makes complex with calcium salts and form a calcium salt calcium and free fatty acid complex are formed which are the hard and yellowish in color in histological section of fat necrosis the outlines of dead fat cells are seen without nuclei and dark blue appearance is due to the complex of calcium and free fatty acid the calcium is staining with blue you can see in the figure the calcium the is appear as bluish discoloration along with fat complexes fibrinoid necrosis it is a type of immunological reaction in which the antigen antibody complex are deposited in the blood vessels it is seen in the immune vascular reaction that is polyarthritis nodosa it is also known as pan and non immune condition like preeclampsia and hypertensive emergencies it is due to the immune complex deposition in the vessel wall and it is a type of hypersensitivity reaction that is type 3 hypersensitivity reaction is taking place also the plasma protein fibrin leak from the vessel wall gangrenous necrosis the gangrenous necrosis are subdivided into the dry gangrenous and wet gangrene the dry gangrene is sub type of an coagulo necrosis in the wet gangrene it is a combination of coagulo necrosis and superseded by liquefactor necrosis it is mostly seen in the limbs due to the occlusion of in blood vessels so the undergoes necrosis caseous necrosis caseous necrosis means cheesy like appearance it is mostly seen in the tuberculosis of lung uh, we can see there is a tuberculosis of lung there is appearance of yellowish cheesy like appearance in the upper portion it is also seen in the other condition like nocardia infection and histoplasma capsulatum fungal infections here the granuloma formation taking place the granuloma means the injured cell is surrounded by the macrophages and the macrophages are surrounded by the lymphocytes making a complex is called a granuloma formation now apoptosis apoptosis means program cell death by caspases it is also known as suicidal pathway because degradation of cells own nuclear dna material along with cytoplasmic and nuclear protein are taking place one thing we should be remember that is apoptosis can be seen in both condition that is physiological as well as pathological condition and here no inflammation is taking place in apoptosis actually the caspases are the cystine proteases which cleave after the aspartic acid residues so physiological conditions in which apoptosis plays role are during amelogenesis gap between phalanges in between our finger there is a gap so this gap is created by the mechanism of apoptosis destruction of immature b cells in bone marrow are taking place by apoptosis and endometrial breakdown so the pathological condition in which apoptosis is playing role are radiation damage cytotoxic and anti cancer drugs accumulation of misfolded proteins by the mutation and cell death in certain viral infections hiv and hepatitis b infections now the morphological changes in apoptosis are cell shrinkage chromatin condensation cytoplasmic blaps and formation of apoptotic bodies phagocytosis of apoptotic cells out of this the chromatin condensation is most characteristic morphological features in apoptosis the pathways of apoptosis the pathway of apoptosis are divided into the intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway is also known as the mitochondrial pathway and the mitochondrial pathway is major pathway associated with the leakage of cytochrome c from the inner mitochondrial membrane to the cytoplasm and its initiator caspase is 9 and execution of caspase of mitochondrial pathway is caspase number 6 and caspase number 3 extrinsic pathway is minor pathway and it is mediated by the ligand mediated that is fas and fas ligand combination which lead to formation of fadd that is fast associated death domain intrinsic pathway or mitochondrial pathway in the absence of certain growth signals the mitochondrial changes are taking place that is the activation of sensor are taking place 
So the sensors lead to increase in the production of proapoptotic proteins that is PAX, PAC, SMAC and DI below. And the proapoptotic proteins create pores in outer membrane of mitochondrial wall. So it makes the wall more permeable. So the decrease in anti-apoptotic factors are taking place. Anti-apoptotic factors are BCL2 and BCL XL. It maintains the impermeability of wall. That is, it creates an oligomer inside the wall and makes the wall impermeable. So, in presence of sensors, the proapoptotic proteins are more and antiapoptotic proteins are less. After the activation of sensors, the proapoptotic proteins are more compared to the antiapoptotic factors, which leads to the production of the pores in outer wall and makes the mitochondrial wall permeable. So, the cytochrome C leaks from the mitochondria to the cytoplasm. Cytochrome C binds with APOF1, which is apoptosis activating factor 1, present in cytoplasm and leads to the formation of wheel like hexamer called apoptosome. Apoptosome combined with caspase 9 and activation of caspase by its cleavage finally activates the caspase and leads to the apoptosis. Factors playing role in mitochondrial pathway are pro-apoptotic factors that is BAX, DIABLO and SMAC which create pores and create channels in outer membrane. So the leakage becomes easily and cytochrome C leaks from mitochondria to cytoplasm and the apoptotic factors are BCL2, BCLXL and MCL1. Sensors. Sensors are BID bead, BIM, PUMA and NOXA. Anti-apoptotic factors like BCL2, BCLXL and MCL1 prevent the release of cytochrome C from mitochondria by making the wall impermeable. Sensors regulate balance between the proprietary factors and anti factors and it is sensor of an stress and damage. Extrinsic or the death receptor pathway. Extrinsic or death receptor pathway. FS receptors are present on cells and it is serine identified positive. FS receptors bind with FS ligand which is present in mature T cells and complex form is called FATD. The FAS receptors are present in cells of our body and FAS ligand are present by the T cells of body. So the combination of an FAS and FAS ligand is called a domain. So the domain is formed called FADD, fast associated dead domain. This domain will lead to activation of an caspase number 8 and which leads to the autocatalytic caspase activation and apoptosis takes place. After cell death, the apoptotic bodies are formed and fragments and phosphorylated serine splits out. After cell death, apoptotic bodies are formed. The fragments of cell and phosphorylated serine are flipped out. It means that the generally the phosphorylated serine molecules are residing inside the cell wall but in, in apoptosis it comes out and it gives positive reaction with annexin 5 di Phagocytosis of an apoptotic bodies are taking place without the inflammation, detection of apoptosis, measurement of cytochrome C and caspase enzyme. In apoptosis, the phosphorylated serine residues comes out and annexin 5 di gives positive reaction. Electrophoresis The electrophoresis of apoptosis gives step ladder pattern that is green circle indicates the step ladder pattern of apoptosis and the figure on the right hand side indicates the smear pattern which is an agarose gel electrophoresis of necrosis.